Welcome everyone, my name is Nicole Slater. I'm a strategic marketing consultant and I help people share their message with the world by helping them learn about email marketing, websites, business networking, and the lot. You can find out more at NicoleSlaterConsulting.com. And I brought on a very special guest, Mike O'Connor. Mike, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, thanks Nicole. I'm Mike O'Connor. Um, many people find it hard to talk about themselves and their work. I guide artists to find their story and learn to tell it effectively. So that's what we'll that. be talking about today. I love that. You have the perfect elevator pitch, which is why we're here today, because you're actually you. a storytelling mentor. Um, and I have so many artist clients that really have trouble with them. And I try to craft that message uh, with them so they can share that on Instagram and right. Facebook and stuff like that. And then I came across you. I'm like, this is so perfect because you can help, you know, my clients and now other people that are watching this craft sure. their story. So tell me about storytelling and, and why it's important for artists. Storytelling is important because uh, actually in anything you do, you have been exposed to stories and you will be. Uh, as a child, you had them read to you. If you have children or nieces and nephews, you've read stories to them. And the, the magic about a good story, a, a well-crafted and well-told story is the people that are listening actually become a part of that story. They'll actually, if you can just imagine, step into that story and become either one of the characters or very, very close with, with one of the characters you're describing. I'm not saying that we invent a, um, a, a Peter Rabbit story when you show your art. You have your own story. And when you're showing your work or talking about your work, you're talking basically about yourself and how that work got from inside of here to the canvas or the paper or the pedestal or whatever you do as an artist. Um, and as you tell that story, if it's if it's well-crafted story, we become part of that uh, to the point that actually in my classes, I train people to tell me about their work before I have ever seen it and to see if when I do finally see it, I'm disappointed. And so far, I've never been disappointed. Once they tell that story about what they're doing, uh, as I say, they, they'll do it without even showing the work. And that that takes practice, and but it also takes the passion that you have as an artist, just translate it in another, into another avenue, and that's talking about your work. I feel in like school, storytelling is so primal. You know, it, it, it makes it us human, it, it separates us. And it's, you know, a tale yeah. as old as time. But th there really is something to connecting to your own story and who you are and yep. being able yep. to express that. And definitely for artists, they're good at doing that on canvas, you know, right. or through art. But putting words sometimes is really, it, you know, flummoxes people to really say like, oh, I have to like, it's almost like being seen. It's very scary for people. It is. And as, as I was going to say a second ago, in, in art schools, in the, in the training, it's, it's all technique and, and, and tools and how you do things and the philosophy of, of what you're putting on this canvas or paper or with your, with your camera, whatever. Um, but no one ever talks to you about how do you describe your work. Thus, so many people come out of art school thinking that, well, okay, I've got this vocabulary of, of 200 of the most common art phrases that you know, the academics have always used, and that's what I have to use. And it's, it's just the opposite of that. You you have to talk to us as if as if it's somebody that knows nothing about art, but appreciates art, because you don't know who's going to be in the audience. And these are the people you have to connect with. The other people, it will not upset them. If you talk to the people that, that are not the art people and describe your work to them, I promise you, you will not disappoint any of your artist friends or any of the professionals in the room. In fact, I, I almost guarantee you they'll be refreshed. That's a very, very good point. You know, I was at a gallery in Hermosa Beach, Shockbox Gallery, and it's such a great place. It's got all kinds it of is. cool, funky art. Yeah. And um, I was talking to a couple artists there, as you do at an artist reception, and one person in particular had such an amazing story. And I can't even describe to you what the art was like, because he didn't necessarily tell me exactly what everything was. He left these kind of moments of mystery and he talked more about why he was doing it and his passion. He's like, I don't want to give too, away too much. You have to go see it in person. Right. Right. And it was at a local library. And I was like, 
I will drive down from Tarzana, which is very far away Absolutely. in the valley, all the way down again to go see this at this library. Cause I got to figure out. And when he did his social media, he didn't show too much. And I thought that was so interesting. Yep. I talked to another artist um, at the same event and they just went, Oh uh, yeah, I do stuff. And uh, well, I guess here's my Instagram. Yeah. And then I'm just like, and then I'm disconnected from them and I'm just scrolling. And I was like, Oh, this is really interesting. But it, it, I didn't leave with a human connection. So it was a really stark example of like two ways to tell your story. Absolutely. And, and the most common way is to not even tell a story. The most common way is from what I've seen is people giving themselves a label and telling us how they do their work. I was at a workshop this weekend and I worked with, um, there were 13 or 14 artists that were there. And each time I asked them, I, I always asked them two questions. What do you do? And tell me about your work. And the answers are both the same. I'm an artist. I'm a painter. I'm a photographer. I use um, multi layers of, of, color on my canvases to express the, the the imagery and and it's almost like I'm getting an art lesson from them and quite frankly I don't care and when you label yourself when someone asks what you do you take the possibility that somebody could either give you an answer you don't care to hear very common answer when people say I'm a photographer to a stranger that says what do you do the the answer that they get from the person is do you do weddings and bar mitzvahs and when i asked the photographer is that what you do and they said well of course not and so then my retort is well why do you give them the opportunity to ask that of you why do you give them that opportunity don't tell them what you do tell them the reason you do what you do and let them come back to you and say gosh tell me more about this and that's the reaction we get if if the story is told properly especially in elevator pitch I think one thing that I've found when networking with people is that I love that that little comment that you said, don't tell them everything, right? You want them to, like, oh, tell me more. And I know you'll go into that in a, in a second with tips. Um, but for me, when I'm networking, it's about having confidence and right. just being able to ease into those awkward silences and right. not necessarily have to spill, you know, fill all the space. I think when people are nervous, they either under talk or the over talk instead of just being comfortable and calming your right. nervous system right. and just being comfortable in your own skin that allows other people to be comfortable in their own skin. And it makes right. it a less awkward exchange. Yep. I agree. In, in talking to people about um, discussing their work in front of a group, whether it be in a gallery or on a zoom or at a museum, a lot of people think of that as public speaking and I tell them it's not public speaking because public speaking gives you the, the, the idea that you're in front of a group of people that you don't know and you're talking, which is extremely scary. In it's the like last, the number one fear, right? <laughs> it is. It is. In the last session I did in one of the last, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a class. And in the last session, one of the people was getting ready to make her presentation. And he said, Mike, I realize this is not public speaking. I'm just talking with my friends. And I thought, bingo, you've got it. You're discussing your work with your friends. And that's that we, we take that step in, in going into finding out who are you talking to and, and you know, what are you going to say? And it's not public speaking. It's it, this should be the easiest thing in the world. You as an artist are, are basically spilling out your guts on your canvas or the pedestal or the photographic paper and telling us everything about you without saying a word. Why can't you tell us in words as well so we can feel about what you're doing the same as you do? That's that's the essence of, of your elevator pitch and, and telling the story of your work is to get me, the viewer, to feel about your work the same as you do. And telling me about the, the, the F-stop or the, the who stretched your canvas or how many layers of paint you juxtapose, that just, I don't care. I, I really, really don't care. And 99% of the people don't. Now, when you talk to somebody later on after the presentation and they say, by the way, can you tell me how you did this physically? That's when you go into the, the uh, quote unquote, the art lesson and tell them how you use the paint and the brushes and the, the canvas and the F-stops and whatever you do. And that's fine. That's perfectly all right. To be, but to begin a presentation, I would avoid that. 
Yeah, I always tell my clients that it's really important to make an emotional connection with your audience. And if they can buy into your story and they feel like there's some part of themselves in that, a lot of my artists and a lot of my clients um, are a little bit older. You know, they've been around the block and they've seen a lot of things in the art world. Yeah. But with that comes a great wealth of knowledge. Give some tips or tricks. Let people know that that you have this knowledge and share that, you know. Right. And I think right. that you're seeing a similar thing of just what is it? What is the why? Why am I? Why am I compelled to do this? I love the the drawing behind you. That's your oh. your wife's uh, drawing, correct? Yes, it is. Yes, that, it is. I thought it was a photograph. It's no, it's no. It's a it's a charcoal and pencil drawing, and it was actually done on white paper. So all the the black background you see was all filled in with charcoal and 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 uh, graphite after the image was um, was installed and erased and by the main installed is drawn in and then erased to get all the white areas. Wow, that is incredible. And I know that she has a lot of themes with Joshua Tree and the plants, the symbiotic yes. relationship. Yes. So I'm yeah. sure that, that she definitely has some nuggets in there when she's doing storytelling about the why of why she's an artist and why she's inspired. It, it, a perfect example is not too long ago, we were at a gallery and some other artists were being interviewed and the interviewer recognized Catherine, my wife, and said, tell us about your work without hesitation. A smile came on her face and this perfectly um, uh, put together story, it, 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 well, by put together, I don't mean it was, you know, a bunch of lies put together. It was no, just but story, it's well prepared, yeah. It well prepared, put together story of, of the pieces that she had and the work she had most recently. And it was short enough to where they were all interested in finding out more. And unfortunately for some of the artists that were being shown, the, the group crowded around her and said, tell me more about what you're doing. And uh, But the thing is, is that's another thing that will happen to you as an artist is someday someone's going to recognize you on a Zoom or at, a, at an opening or or someplace and say, hey, tell me about your work. What are you doing? And if you can't immediately smile and relax and talk about it, then then you, you're losing out on an extraordinary marketing opportunity if selling your work is, is what you want to do. Remember, selling it is not just exchanging it for money. It's also getting a show, um, having a, a, an installation at a museum, uh, being featured on a Zoom with somebody where you're showing your work. All those things are are part of selling your work. So even if you never care about transaction with money, it doesn't matter. But you're always trying to get somebody to somehow showcase your work. That's all yes. part of it. Yes, absolutely. It's so, so let's get into it. So what are some tips that people can do today or craft in the next couple of days about sure. their story? Uh, I know your workshops are normally, you know, several sessions. Um, but I, I do know that you also work with Key Pie Pie and, and take people through the process. Right. So do you have any tips for people uh, to get started? Sure. There's really no shortcuts, but there are ways to, uh, there, there's a few things that if you keep in mind, it'll really help you. Number one, I'd say the most important thing to remember is, is whatever you say about your work is what others will say when you're not there. Thus, if you talk about your work and the process of how it's painted and how it's put together, or how it's photographed, um, how it's put on the wall, whatever it is, if it's a long involved process and a lot of technique, people are probably not going to remember that. So if you're part of a group show, um, the, the people that work at the gallery, the museum may may avoid talking about your work because they it's it's too involved and and they don't want to sit there and read something. Reading something is the worst thing you can do whether it's you or someone representing your work. So if you have a story about your work, the reason you're doing what you're doing, and that's the key is what is the reason you do what you do? What is the reason for that? There, I got it. That cactus right there that was drawn like that and and not photographed, but drawn. There's a reason that, that she chooses to draw that instead of photograph it. And if you tell that reason, and it's three or four sentences long, the people in the gallery, the museum are going to be able to tell that to the people who look at it. Someone who looks at that work is going to go home and tell their friend, their spouse, their partner, whatever. You should have seen what I saw today. And without describing the piece, they'll tell the story of the work. That gets back to that original storytelling where we become part of the work. So whatever you say about your work is what others will say when you're not there. Okay. 
And that is so that is so yeah. good. That is the quote. Put it on a bumper sticker. Put yeah. it on a yeah. T-shirt. Yep. I, I think that's so great. And when I, especially when I think about getting into a gallery, yes. um, the art of storytelling and your series and your artist statement is so imperative because that is the bullet points the gallerist is going to use to sell your art. Yeah. So Absolutely. so knowing what that is and connecting with that, and then also the second step, communicating that. Is right. really imperative for other people to talk about your art and potentially sell your art. Right, right. And the story you tell does not have to be a fifty-page book or or well, two-hour miniseries. I'm too tired for that. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants to hear that. Three or four yeah. sentences is all that's needed, and you can do that. You you can you can do that in in. I mean, your elevator pitch. If someone sits next to you on a plane or at a fundraiser or something, and you don't know them and they don't know you. First of all, you don't know your audience. So I would expect, I would always expect that that's the worst audience could be. In other words, somebody who has no art education, uh, but has art appreciation, possibly. They'll they'll buy what they like, um, but only if they understand what they're looking at. And if you label yourself, then the label is a good way for them to turn you off. Oh, I don't like photographs. I never buy photographs. Or, oh, you're an artist? Oh, my brother's three-year-old is an artist. In the weekend workshop that we did, four people told me that when when they're asked by a stranger, what do you do? They said they're an artist. I said, what's the most common response? That was it. Someone in their family has a child who's an artist. And that's nice. But that's not the conversation that I would suspect you'd want to be in. If someone asks you, what are you doing? They're actually handing you the ball saying, please tell me about you and what you're doing. That's a golden opportunity for you to take that ball and and set it up to where you can go in and talk about your work. That's really, really key information. Um, another thing that I recommend for my clients is know your audience. Obviously, it's hard when you're on an airplane and you don't know anything. But if you're the one to start asking questions first and kind of gauge where they are, especially in the art world, you can start, once you get your story, tailoring your pitch and making sure that, you know, you can move it and you don't have to completely change it. You, you want to stay authentic to who you are, but it's a much different conversation if they're a gallerist right. that could potentially show your work versus another artist that maybe you could swap with and give advice to, and they could give you advice. Or you guys could talk about where the best framer is. Um, right. So, right. you know, once the advanced level is start tailoring it to your audience. Yes, and, and, and Nicole, you made an excellent point about knowing your audience. That's one of the key things that, that I go over. And, and again, I, I recommend to people, expect the worst. And if somebody says, well, I, I, I run a gallery, and then all of a sudden, um, you're four pages later down on your script about what you're going to talk about. You can immediately start talking about your work. But don't push it on them, obviously. But um, there's, there's really really efficient ways to work with that and work with people like that. So, but I would expect somebody, when I say the worst, I don't mean a bad person, but somebody who has no formal art training. Your job isn't to train them in art. Your job is to get them to feel about your work the same as you do. I've said that twice today. So that's another key is to, is to get somebody to feel about it's what you do the same as you do. That's, that's the essence of storytelling. That's beautiful. Any other quick tips for people that they can start implementing or, um, you know, start journaling and thinking about kind of their why? Yes. I think one of the most important things is, is when you talk about um, yourself, talk about your work, I'm not saying, well, I became an artist when I was four. I picked up a colored pencil and knew I was going to be an artist the rest of my life. Quite frankly, that's something that folks don't really care about. And it gets to be a long involved narrative of your the life story of you. When I say your story, there is a reason that you go into your studio every day and do what you do, produce what you do, create what you do, um, whatever you do. There's a reason you do that. And that's essential for you to find out. And when I when I work with the people for instance, this weekend, working with the people, I would ask them, what is the reason you go into the studio? Because I like it. Why is that important to you? I like staying in your studio. And, and then it's, it's well, it, it, I get fulfillment out of it. And, I, and then the next question is, in other words, I keep taking them down and down and down 
till it gets right down to the nitty gritty. Um, I don't go into personal tragedy stories. If that's part of it, then I recommend that get in touch with that. Find out what your art does to relieve you from that tragedy. That's why you do what you do. And that's part of what we're going to share when you talk about your story. Not that you had a horrible life, because quite frankly, if you tell me the story of how bad your life was, uh, I bet your mind was worse. That's what people are thinking. And regardless of how bad yours was, people are going to be thinking, oh, yeah, well, mine was worse. And that's not the kind you of. You don't want to race to the sense. bottom. You don't want to start a tit no, for tat conversation. No. You Not just can allude to like, you know, I, I went through some challenges. I had some adversity, but Perfect. I overcame it. And one of the ways I overcame it is through my art. And that's Perfect. why I'm passionate about what I do. Right. And that's exactly the way you craft it is, is as you, I had a very, uh, or as many people have had, I had a horrible upbringing. And the only relief I had was when I locked myself into my room and built things out of clay and added sticks to them from the local trees and just whatever it is. And as you're doing that, as you're describing what you're doing, you're building your story. And then that story becomes what we're thinking about and what we're looking at when we look at your work. And, and then we become involved in the story and we can, a multitude of things happens there. If it's efficient and, and it's, it's well-crafted and it's compelling, then people will feel about your work the same as you do. And that, quite frankly, is, is what a sale is all about. I love that. Thank you so much, Mike. You gave me so much to think about, so much to, I'm going to start looking at my own story and how I communicate it. And you're such a wealth of knowledge for people. How can people find out more information about you? How can they can get in contact with you? Well, uh, certainly through um, the Instagram that you see below. Um, I, have, um, I, I have a Facebook page. It's actually undergoing some changes right now, but it's uh, the Fine Art of Storytelling is the Facebook page. Um, I have an email, Mike H. O'Connor without the apostrophe. So it's Mike with an H and an O'Connor, O-C-O-N-N-O-R. The number's 59 at gmail.com. Awesome. And, and I can there's a story behind the five nine. Yeah, I can link people to your website or your Instagram and in the notes yeah. below. Thank you yeah. so much. I appreciate you. You've learned so much. And I can't wait to see what's next for both of us in the fine art of storytelling. So I thank sure you. look forward to it. Thank you very much, Nicole. And thanks, everybody.